What's up guys, Doug Polk here and welcome back for another episode of Apostle Hands. And today we're going to be taking a look at a hand where we're going to do things a little bit different. Normally when we record the show, we, the audience, know both players' hands, but both players are in the dark as to what each other has. In this episode though, we're going to go ahead and mix that up. On that note, let's go ahead and jump into the action. Our hand begins at 1 3 with a $6 straddle here under the gun from Mike, who looks down at Jack 10. Now, we're going to know Mike's hand in this hand, but we're not going to know his opponent's so we can understand the play a little bit better. Our action folds to Robert, who looks down at his hand and raises it up to $26 to go. And now the action folds on to Mike Postle in the straddle with Jack 10. Now, this is a fairly normal spot to defend with Jack 10. Uh, we are in the straddle. Jack 10 is, of course, a reasonably decent hand. It's certainly one that you can look to defend when you're out of position in the blinds. And Mike does make the call, and let's take a flop. 39 something. 39, 39, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. No, 39, right? 39. 39. The flaw comes 9 3 deuce with two clubs, and Mike checks it over to Robert. Now, Robert decides to go with a one third pot bet here, a little on the smaller side, just $20. And this bet uh, can accomplish a lot. The big blind's going to have all kinds of hands that brick this flop and aren't going to have much to continue with. And also, if the big blind had a hand with a three or a deuce in it, well, those are going to be some of his main hands. He'll just fold pre flop and he'll miss this flop so by using a small bet here we can get a lot accomplished now over to mike with his jack 10. now this is a situation where you might think you have nothing and you're facing one third pot obviously you should just fold but not so fast you actually have a lot of turns and rivers that you have some playability in fact when i used to play heads up these were some of my favorite hands to float in the flop because the way that the hand plays out on a lot of turns and rivers, the ones that improve you, uh, you actually uh, get a lot of action against you. And the ones that uh, you know are bad for you, they might perceive as being cards that are bad for them. Let me give you a few examples here. Let's say that this turn is a 10 or a jack. Well, in that scenario, uh, you now have top pair and your opponent's not going to think that that's too likely of a hand. And so they're often going to put a lot of money on those runouts where you have a pretty strong hand. Another example here could be if the turn is a nine, uh, you can set yourself up for all kinds of bluffs here because a nine is going to be one of your main hands you can have for value and you can represent three of a kind. Same can be said on uh, club turns. Besides turning a back to a flush as well, you can also represent a flush. Or maybe on a four, five, or six, you can represent some kind of straight or, or, or unlikely but possibly two pairs set. You know, it's, so this is the kind of hand where even though you don't have a lot in the flop, good players will often float here if you make the price cheap enough because it does play well on later streets. There's also something to be said for once in a blue moon going for raise here, but you do have other better hands to raise with like flush draws, backdoor flush draws, straight draws, things like that. So uh, all in all, I think you should mainly look to call here on the flop, which Mike does decide to do, and let's take a turn. Got an offer to book a win at this table without playing a hand. Yeah, and how much? The turn's a jack, and this is exactly what we call in the flop. We now have a very cleverly disguised top pair, a hand certainly good enough to go all the way, and our opponent's not going to think we hit that card much at all. Mike once again checks over to Robert, who decides to go for just a half pot size. So um, a very modest size here on the turn when you do decide to bet. Half pot is something that uh, if you have really a nine or a jack, obviously you're going to be looking to call and call the river again. Uh, and you also think about this, like Mike can have hands like ace-four, ace-five, or flush draws, or uh, other hands like king-queen that might float the flop. He can have so many other hands here that top pair is just simply way too good to ever let go. I could be wrong when I say this because the world's a big place, but I don't think there are any poker players in the world who would float this flop and fold a jack turn. Except one. 125. Who do you think Raj taught how to play poker? The next person on the list is not here, and then Chris is after him. Oh, how much? Really need Rob, how much? Hey, you guys want to do a pool here? Now, why would Mike fold this turn after making this flop call? 
You know, it's it, it, it's certainly something that we have to think about. Uh, could it be he has a good read in his opponent? Could it be that he thinks he's beat? Um, or is it because his opponent has pocket nines? Ball is really in your court on this one. But I'll tell you what I think. I think on this flop, Mike realized that he's got backdoor equity to improve to a straight. And when he does, he's going to make all the money. I mean, if this board runs off queen and then king or uh, eight and then seven, things like that, he's going to make a ton of money because his opponent will not be able to put it on a straight. And he knows he's getting the implied odds because he's up against a set. On those runouts, there's no way pocket nines could expect to see a hand like a straight. And so he knows that he's getting the implied odds, meaning when he does hit his hand, he'll make a lot of money, to call here and try to draw. When he hits top pair instead of equity against a set, well, now it's time to let it go because you're drawing dead. I think this is a very obvious example of Mike cheating, possibly. Allegedly. Thank you for joining me here today for Postle Hands. I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks for joining.